Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Pixel Feed Radio, and I'm here with my friend Nate Palmer. Nate, how you doing today, man? Man, I'm awesome. Living the dream. How about yourself? <laughs> Trying to live the dream, but <laughs> being locked up at home doesn't help. But we're gonna get into that in a little bit. For those of you that don't know, uh, Nate is a um, NASM certified personal trainer and corrective exercise specialist. Uh, he's a precision nutrition level one coach. And he's the best-selling author of Passport Fitness, The Nonsense Guide to Staying in Shape No Matter What City You Wake Up In. Uh, I know a lot of the people watching this and listening to this world, you know, digital nomads. Well, I'm not now because I'm, I have a kid now, but, uh, you know, we, we live out of the, the laptop life, traveling all over the world. Well, and now you got Rona, but, you know, people are still doing it now. Uh, so we, I see when you travel a lot, you tend to let everything go. And I, I feel like, People working from home at first, like, yeah, I'm going to work out from home and it's going to be great. I'm going to be healthy. And they just let it all, all go. But uh, yeah, he specializes in working with entrepreneurs and business owners to create energy, focus, and lean, healthy body, uh, which is, I think it's extremely important. That's uh, why I wanted to have you on uh, before we get into what you do and everything. It's, it's, that's one thing I realized when I hit 30. That's when I, when I started to like, okay, I need to do something because my energy levels are non-existent. I was still drinking a lot back then because I was partying mm. through my twenties and all that stuff. And I still, you know, drank, uh, I mean, I still drink, but not like I used to obviously. And now it's very rare, but it takes a toll on your body, man. You can't focus. Like, I mean, it got to a point where I'm 40 now, but around 35, even just the happy hours, if I would just go for a happy hour, have a few drinks and eat like crap, the next day I'll wake up and I can't even concentrate on writing an email. Dude, it's like right? two days now too. You know, it's oh, not no, just like me one day. You're like, you like, you suck the first day. And then the second day you're like, all right, I'm getting a little better. I'm still not quite there. Yeah. No, for example, I had, um, this is what people have to look forward to. I had a, a friend <laughs> from college. Uh, he just moved close to me and I haven't seen him in forever. And you know, he, he, he's in the healthcare industry. So he's had the shots and all that good stuff for the Rona. And I, have, I don't leave the house, so there's no worries there. So we decided to get together at his house because we haven't seen each other in years and we're like really good friends. And man, you know how it is when guys get together. We just went a little too hard on Friday. And man, I paid the price till Wednesday. <laughs> like, oh. Yeah, I was still hung over on Sunday. And then after that, you know, you you don't have a headache and stuff anymore, but you're just like tired. You're dragging out and the energy levels are not there. And for what I do, man, you need that energy. I mean, you do. You really do. As, as busy as I am, I, I have to. So I mean, even just like an interview, like it's people don't really understand how like how much mental like focus and acuity it takes to like hear the information and be like, okay, we're taking the conversation in this way and then like make those connections. Like it's this is work, bro. And if you're not on, if you're not sharp, it's hard to be, it's hard to be present, huh? Not only that, but I also have like calls with clients and I look at data all day long. That's what I do. I look at data so you're switching all day constantly long. Switching hats, yeah, really? yeah. So and then you know, recording videos and stuff like that. So I gotta be on point, man. So let's get into it. So obviously you're passionate about fitness uh you started working out when, when you were young i'm assuming that's how it started yeah i i uh if you want to if you want to just get deep right off the bat when yeah I let's, was, do uh, when I, let's do it let's do it i was growing up i was like 13 and someone broke into my house while i was home alone and so like as a 13 year old kid like i so i graduated high school at like six four and uh like 155 pounds like super super skinny and uh so when i so this guy broke into my house and i was like hiding under my bed with a steak knife and this guy's like pounding on my door, breaks my door down and looking around my room, just like scares the shit out of me. I'm sorry, I don't know if I can no, you're say fine. that. But, no, you're good, but, uh, <laughs> too late now anyway, so like, go. <laughs> <laughs> but ever since then, like it's just been this, like it started off as like this powerlessness thing, right? Where like, I don't ever want anyone to like be able to hurt me again. I don't wanna put myself in a position of like not having power. So it was like, hey, maybe if I make my meat suit like thick enough and like, and bulky enough, like no one will mess with me, right? And so what it kind of ended up being was this like this long journey of of like actually discovering what you get out of training. And it's not all about like sweet biceps, which is it's cool, but like it's the confidence that comes along with like having done something for years and years and years and years, plus like the energy that you get from it, like continuing to build your metabolism and like the friendships you make and just like learning that like I think like the one thing that stands out to me about fitness is that just like in business, if you don't quit, you can't lose at it. It might take you longer, but like the only way to lose is to quit. So I think that's like the like the main takeaway I got, even though I was really going for like just going with that pow Rocky McPower muscles, protein like protein bottle like back like you know what that guy looks like like that's how yeah, I, yeah I know what you're talking 13. about yeah I know what you're talking about yeah 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 
No, that's cool, man. Uh, you know, it's funny that you, it's interesting that not funny. It's interesting that you bring that up because, uh, I grew up, uh, you know, when I went to, uh, you know, high school and college, uh, I was really good friends with, uh, a lot of football players somehow. I don't know how that happened, but you know, <laughs> uh, and they all have kind of a similar story of why they started lifting weights. And obviously a lot of them did steroids, you know, to keep size for football and all that stuff. Uh, and it, it's, it's always like something happened that made them get obsessed with being huge. Like whether it was like abused by an adult or like getting their ass kicked at some point when they were a kid and picked on or something. And, and, and still to this day, I mean, some of them are still huge. And like, I started working out just because I was being, I, I was the poster child for not unhealthy bench drinking every day, smoking cigarettes. And then at 30, I just decided, I was like, all right, I got to slow down. I got to, I got to take it easy and I got to get my shit together basically and, and concentrate and focus and things. Um, so obviously you started working out and all that, but how did you decide to start the business? I mean, how did you, I mean, how, did, how did we evolve from, from you, doing it as a passion to turn it into the business that you have today? Well, uh, like when I was going to college, I was going to University of Arizona and I was getting a degree in business and like, man, I could like barely show up at my classes, <laughs> but I would spend like six hours every night, like reading through these like bodybuilding articles and reading about fitness and stuff like that. So it was just this thing that I was like, oh my gosh, I have like, I love this so much, but like, give me like a business book or like, I was like, like an environmental psychology. Like I just like all these classes, I just didn't, didn't care about at all. And so after that, I was like, I, I graduated into the thriving job market of 2008. Nice. So, <laughs> That's when I lost my first company, 2009. Yeah. yeah so fun you, time. You know, it's like, there wasn't yeah. just like jobs, just like people being ha like handing out. So I went to a gym and I was like, Hey, I should just try to like become a trainer. And so they're like, Hey, if you get your, if you get your certification, you can come back, we'll give you a job. So it's like, I'll, let me just do this until I figure out what I want to do when I grow up. And so like fast forward a year, I was like, oh man, this is like great, but I'm not getting paid very much. I don't have insurance, all these things. So I'm gonna get a real job. Started working indoor, like indoor sales. And like, dude, I like Christian day one, I'm in training and they're like, all right, everyone, like, let's get started. And I was like, this is such a bad fit for me. I am so <laughs> sad I'm here. So I lasted about you, three you're months talking, You're talking to an old school sales guy. I started in sales <laughs> for myself. So, I mean, I can only imagine the room you walked into. And then if yeah. we know, we can see the fear in your eyes, man. And we'll, we'll feed on that. <laughs> well, I mean, I, lo I love sales, but it was just all telephone sales. And it was like this, it was like this really overbearing. I don't like people just telling me what to do. I'm a pretty bad employee. Yeah. So because it was like, Hey, you have two minutes to go use the bathroom. I was like, that's crazy. What? Yeah. That's so crazy. it was like that kind of environment. So, um, yeah, I've moved on from that, opened up my own studio and then just kind of been working in the industry ever since started going pretty much fully online coaching in 2015 when, uh, that was kind of what that book's about passport fitness. It's talked a lot about my, like my wife and I traveled through South America, lived abroad for about a, a little over a year, worked in a bunch of different locations. And then, uh, just been basically doing online coaching ever since. And then my new book came out, uh, like Thursday, my body cool. method based off of like kind of all the, all the lessons I've learned and all the, like the results I've seen over the last like 11 years of, of working in this industry. So I just wanted to put it in more people's hands, to be honest, because working That's with awesome. a coach is expensive. You know, it's sometimes people can't afford that, but everyone can afford a $15 book. And I think I, I don't hold anything back. It's not one of those books where it's like, Hey, like this is a big long sales letter for my, for my program. It's, it's I just, yeah, I just lay it all out. I'm the same way, man. I don't hold anything back. And it's funny because sometimes people will schedule like a coaching call with me and I, I put it in there. I was like, better have some good questions because <laughs> I don't want you to hear everything that you've already seen. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, it's happened a couple of times. I'm like, dude, I, there's no secret sauce. You just got to put in the work and I already gave you all the tools. You know, it's like, you, I, so people even tell me, it's like, I just want to hear it from you. I'm like, that's crazy to me. That's insane to me. But also a lot of people need like to hear you like seven times, right? Like that's why like when you're like, we're putting out content, we're putting out kind of like a broken record content. Like yeah. you, you plant your flag, right? And you're like, mm -hmm. you say it again and again and again and again and again until people are like, I get it. Like it just takes a while because of our like ADHD culture right now. Yeah. I joke around all the time that uh, I wish I was hardcore into working out because I work out because I have to. And the whole like hour I'm in the gym, I hate it. Like I hate it. <laughs> to me, it's like a waste of time, but I feel so good when I'm done. I really do. I feel fantastic when I'm done. But like the whole preface to get into the gym and actually working out and I and 
and I should turn my notifications off on my phone man, now that I think about it, but I see notifications come in and I'm like, oh man, I got to deal with this, got to deal with that. Like, I just want to, you know, get work done. And to me, it's like, this is such a waste of time, but if I don't do it, then I'll be 300 pounds. And then you know, it's like, it, it's one of those things that you need that balance, man, especially after you hit 30. I wish, I actually wish I would have started working out when I was a teenager, but I was too busy skateboarding and then doing other things in college. So that went out the window. Uh, but now, you know, I see the thing that that's the other thing I want to talk to you about um, that I'm jealous of. People who are like hardcore into fitness, man. A lot of them don't know how to monetize their knowledge. And it's one of those things to me that it's insane because you can make so much money. You can be so successful at it by helping other people and doing what you love. But for some reason, most of them get stuck in the whole like they don't know how to get clients. They don't, you know, they don't. They become personal trainers, they get certifications, but they don't know how to get clients. And I'm like, you know, I know, I'm like, all you got to do is put out some content, man, daily and then build a funnel. That's all you got to do. And next thing you know, you'll have book calls all day long. And it's like, for some reason, I think it's it's more people do it now, but it took forever to for people to catch up. And still, most people don't still to this day. What do you think that is? Because it's crazy to me. Like What I found out too, I work with a, couple, a few like uh, fitness people. A lot of them are super insecure about the way they look on camera and in pictures, which makes sense because that's why like they're ripped and going to competitions because they look at every flaw in their body, right? Yeah, get that so, body dysmorphia a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So yeah. What, what do you think that is that the, that in this industry, so many people leave some money on the table and they don't focus on how to get the business going it's like you did, you know? I think like the first thing is that like, uh, we kind of get sold this like Russell Brunson, like one funnel away, like you build the funnel and then all of a sudden I'm a millionaire. Yeah. But right. It's like when it's not, it's not about that. It's about having conversations, putting out content, but the content as a, like as a pathway to get on more sales calls, right? Like I've never had someone buy like a, a worthwhile package from me off a website. It's never happened. I don't think it's ever going to happen. Um, but I, but I think that like, if I can, if I can book those calls, if I can ask a lot, if I can ask a lot of people, Christian, Hey, What's going on with your health and fitness right now? What goals are you working on right now? If I can ask a hundred people question, that question every single month, I'm going to have a successful business no matter what. If I'm using Instagram, if I'm using YouTube, if I'm using LinkedIn, if I just have that conversation over and over and over again, and I can help a ton of people, then you like, then that's the way to do it. But I think a lot of people are obsessed with like, well, how do I, how do I get like the checkout and the one click offer and like, oh, I don't have like the right like frame for my YouTube. It's like, you don't need, like, you don't need to have a, a massive following. You don't need to have like the greatest technology. Just go on, be yourself. You're gonna attract your kind of your your tribe anyways. Yeah, I tell people all the time, man. All it takes, uh, if you're listening or watching this, look at this thing called 1,000 uh, followers or hardcore followers. And it's basically the the, um, the idea that if you develop a following, a following of 1,000 hardcore followers that will buy from you one thing or not even one thing or multiple products, if they add up to 100 bucks, 100 bucks, in one year, you will make six figures. You will make a hundred grand in one year. And that's not hard, man. You can sell one product for a hundred bucks and most people will buy it if they believe in your in stuff. fitness, especially. I know in fitness, especially. So, so, that, uh, so let's get into uh, people who travel and like, you know, with the pandemic and most people, you know, they were all like about working out at home. I canceled my gym membership as soon as like this whole thing went down because I was shutting down anyway. And I didn't work out for two months and I felt like absolute, you know, horrible. Um, so you know, what do you suggest people do now that there's, I mean, a lot of states are still like kind of locked up. Um, what do you suggest people do to stay healthy? Like, you know, working from home, like yesterday, my neck was killing me. I sat in front of my computer for like 12 hours and I maybe I took maybe two breaks. Yeah, it's horrible. Uh, but that's, a, that's not every day, but it's, ha you know, every once in a while, it's like, it's a long day. So what that's do you recommend? For you. I'll shoot it over to you. Yeah, oh, that'd be amazing. So what do you recommend that people do to stay healthy working from home? I think that's what most people want to here right now. Okay. I think there's two, two major things. Number one, taking walks is extremely underrated. Um, it's so good for you. It's so good for your mental health. It's going to clear your brain. Like if you're ever like stuck on a problem, you don't know exactly what to do or what to say next, taking a quick walk will help you just like get out of your own head and get like, get the solution. Plus walking is like arguably more of a fat burning activity than even jogging is. So just walking 30 minutes per day is like one of the best things that people can do. It's free. It's you know, it's not like, it's not that hard. Everyone can do it. So, um, I think that's like just a kind of a non-negotiable. And the second thing is like, if you don't have any equipment at home, why not? It's been a year. 
You know, like you need <laughs> to have true. something. You need to have something at home. Like, and if you're if you don't have it at home, then like that's a priority issue, and not an equipment issue. So get something because like the one of the best things, and I talk about this a lot in Passport Fitness, is the suspension trainer. You can buy like a, you can buy a cheap version of that for for uh, fifty bucks. Hold I on. literally made one in what's a in what's a, a suspension trainer. Like a what TRX, do you know what that is? Okay, yeah, yeah, I know. Bike. I use those. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So handles, nylon straps. So my wife, my wife and I did our honeymoon in Ghana, Africa, and I made uh, like a, a suspension trainer out of towing straps for like six dollars for the kids at like this orphanage. So like you can have one of these things for dirt cheap if you just like you want to. There's all sorts of YouTube video tutorials and stuff like that. But a suspension trainer is one of like the best full body like gyms that you can have for like under a hundred bucks. So super easy. But like I think if you're trying to like have like some good aesthetics, look and feel really good. Having a set of adjustable dumbbells, having a bench, like those are, those will basically get you, the, get you to where you need to be. That's that, that, like, that makes sense. And, uh, what about when we're talking about, you know, I know a lot of people in business, uh, take a lot of stimulants like Adderall and stuff like that. I don't because it makes, I I've done it before. It makes me crazy. So I don't like it. Uh, so but you know, I drink a lot of coffee in the morning. What about, let's get into a little bit of diet because you know, you hear all these people's like, well, ketosis, and then you gotta, uh, you gotta fast for like 16 hours or whatever, you know, it's like, so I, I go back and forth. Like for a time there, I was having breakfast and then a protein shake and then lunch and then dinner. Now it's like, for example, my routine right now is because I'm not lifting weights hard right now. I'm just doing cardio like five to six times a week. So uh, I'm not eating a lot because I, I'm trying to like just keep the weight as normal until I go back to the gym and I have a shoulder injury on top of it. So uh, like I wouldn't even have breakfast. I'll just have coffee. And then after I go, you know, do cardio, whatever, or like I do cardio, like in the morning, like around 10 a.m. just to break up the day a little bit. And then I'll have like a protein shake with like strawberries, almond uh, butter and um, almond butter and almond milk. And then that holds me out for like good, you know, I don't know, three or four hours. And then I'll have like a sandwich, like a tuna sandwich or something like that for lunch. And then dinner, it's always something, you know, like a protein and a little bit of carbs and vegetables. Um, what do you think, like working from home, people's nutrition goes down the tubes, you know, because it's like you have chips, you have stuff laying around and people don't want to cook. I know I don't want to cook. I don't have time for cook. That's why I just do the tuna sandwich like <laughs> during the day just to quick get it done. So what, what do people have to watch out for to stay healthy during the, like, what should they do to keep their nutrition, you know, the right way and, and not just sit here and become a blob at 400 pounds. Okay. Yeah. Good call. And like specifically talking to someone who's like you, Christian, who's got stuff to do. And it's not just like sitting there, like pressing buttons, like waiting for the weekend, right? You're busy. Mm -hmm. You have things to do. You have to show up in a, like in a powerful way. You can't just like coast. Right. Yeah. So let me, let me like shameless plug for this book. No, right go now. for Basically, it, man. This is exactly what I wrote this for. This is a 28 day system that is going to teach you the framework of how I think proper nutrition should be for entrepreneurs. Okay. So especially if you want to be lean, you want to have like some muscle, but you're not trying to like bulk up. You're not trying to run an ultra marathon. Like this is perfect because it's, it's focused first. It's energy first. So starting off your day, like I think that breakfast has a time and a place. I think that for most of us, what I've seen with like the kind of the people who especially eat like staying at home is you do that 16 hour fast, all of a sudden lunch times rolls around, you're like starving and you're like, what do I have? I got pop tarts, I got chips, I'm gonna eat this banana, like just like whatever's, whatever's in the house, right? <laughs> right? I got a two year old, so like she's eating crazy snacks and I should like I should not be eating those things. So <laughs> I think that having a breakfast shake is a really awesome way to do that, but specifically structuring it in a way, and I'll just like kind of lay it out for you, proteins and fats in the morning, so ditching, ditching the carbohydrates, ditching the bananas, ditching the, like, the bread, the oatmeal, those sorts of things. Then for lunch, having a really low carb lunch as well, having like super high protein, super high vegetables. And I know you say you don't have time to cook. So that's why I really recommend what's called batch prep. So like, it's not like meal prep where you're like, and Sunday, like putting things in Tupperware and like bring those to grandma's house and like, like that nerdy shit. But like, yeah. just like go out on the barbecue when you're making dinner, cook 12 chicken thighs and then save eight of them for later. And so that way, when it comes time for lunch, you're just like, okay, grab a handful of baby carrots, have this chicken thigh, throw some tapatio on it out the door and you're feeling really good. You've got a ton of energy. You've got like all the nutrients that you need to help your body recover and repair and rebuild. And then when it comes time for dinner, now you've got a ton of flexibility and freedom to eat with your family. You don't have to stress about it. So like, I want you to have carbs and, pr and protein and a vegetable for dinner. So if that carbs is like, sometimes it's like I'm having pasta or I'm having pizza or I'm having mac and cheese, like great, like live your life. 
but, and then like having a great vegetable, having some sort of high protein thing, but just keeping it super, super low carb for the first couple of meals of the day, eating lighter. So you can accomplish more because when you're digesting, you're pulling blood from your brain, your appendages, and you're pulling it into your gut. So you're never gonna have as much energy when you eat. So that's why like six meals a day snacking all the time is a horrible idea for entrepreneurs. It's like, I can't do it. I mean, I tried it before like years ago when it's like, I was trying to put on muscle. I was trying to get to like 225. And it's like, okay, I got to eat six times. And I was doing the whole like meal prep. Like, you know, like I did it for like three months and dude, I got, I got jacked. I was taking creatine, protein, like everything you can think of except steroids. And I got pretty jacked, but I mean, the amount of food that I had to eat throughout the day and so adhere much. to that schedule and be strict about it. I'm like, this is just not sustainable for someone like me. It's just not, you know what I mean? Like, this is not like how I make my living. I, I mean, I, I look great. Don't get me wrong when I got that bit. It's like, I mean, I can't be eating six times a day and then going to the gym for two hours every day, you know? So, right. and then like, so like, not only are you, are you prepping the food and eating the food, which like takes a while, but like the, like the 30 minutes after the food, you never have as much like mental acuity focus as you, as you did before. And then you're going to the gym all that time. Like, it's like, what's your priority, right? Yeah. Are you trying to like build an amazing lifestyle and, and like blow your business up and like, you know, like be great with your family? Then like, okay, this is perfect for you. If you're trying to get to 225 pounds, like 6% body fat, not the right diet. No, no, man. And I was, you know, I was, uh, I was living on the beach in Fort Lauderdale. So I had to look good on the beach every weekend. That's, you know, I was that's chugging right. beers, but uh, that's why I did it. <laughs> now it's like, I, I just had a kid. He's a year and a half. So it's like, oh, awesome. yeah, I'm not even leaving the house with all this stuff going on. But um, the other thing, it's like when you eat lunch and if you eat something heavy, you know, if you're being lazy and you just go get a cheeseburger or like five guys or something like that, or pizza. And I love pizza. Don't get me yeah. yeah, man. You have that in the middle of the day. Forget it. I get, I just go, I crash. And I mean, I'm just like, oh my God, I, I want to take a nap. And unless I have like espresso or something, it's not happening. So you have, do you know, like, are you familiar with like how the, like the central nervous system works, like sympathetic nervous system state versus parasympathetic? No, go ahead. Okay. So like this, like one of the reasons why that happens is because like when you're like, like evolutionarily, if we're hunting, if we're out like looking for food and if we're hungry, we're going to be more focused and more in tune with our surroundings. So that's sympathetic nervous system dominance. So like the extreme version of that is fight or flight, where it's like, you see a cheetah and you're like chasing, it's like chasing, you're like running to get into a tree. But like, if you stay kind of like right in here all day long, you have more focus, you see more things, your brain makes more connections. You're just like, you're just, you're hunting, right? Now, when you switch into that parasympathetic nervous system dominance, that's that's rest and digest. So that's post Chipotle burrito, that's post Thanksgiving, when your body's like, let's let's chill out. We had our food, like we're good to go. Let's just relax. So that's this like when you start thinking of the food you're eating, not as just food, but as communication, telling your body like, what do you want your body to accomplish in the next three hours? Now let's feed it the right thing so it so it understands that like that prompt. Okay. So um, that's the amazing thing about, about like eating like this is because if, uh, if you have that, that bigger meal in the PM, now you've also signaled your body, hey, it's time to wind down. So you're going to sleep better, sleep deeper, wake up more rested, and then be able to do it all over again. So rather than having those lulls during the day, kind of the up and down the energy, you're up all day, you crash at night, and then you wake up feeling awesome. So it's like, it's like honing in on your body's natural biochemistry and facilitating the results that you're looking for just through nutrition without having to like rely on heavy duty stimulants or Adderall. Yeah. And you talk about uh, building a nutrition framework instead of doing a diet. Uh, you know, when I was first getting into fitness, I, I was, I did every fat diet out there just to do it. I it's mean, fun to try them. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I, I, it wasn't like I was fat. I mean, I just quit smoking at the time and I was gaining weight because I was eating everything in sight. Like as soon as I quit smoking, man, mm -hmm. chocolate. Oh, that's all I wanted. Chocolate still to this day. Like I get cravings for chocolate before that. I like chocolate, but it was never like, Oh my God, I will kill for a that's cupcake so right now. And it's crazy. Um, so, uh, the diet thing, like, especially girls, girls love to do like, you know, uh, fad diets and they like to run 50 hours a day and do the same uh -huh. because they're afraid of lifting weights because they think they're going to get all jacked. And it's like, dude, you don't have the testosterone to get jacked. Like, unless you take it, you know, I've been trying um, to get too jacked for decades. It's not, yeah, hard yeah to exactly. do. <laughs> so um, let's talk about the, the crash diets and why it's important to just, again, we go back to the lifestyle thing, something that sustains your lifestyle, the way you work, the way you, your everyday life is, you know, you can't, 
you know, I eat like crap in the weekend. Like I'll have pizza or a cheeseburger or whatever, but I keep it healthy. Like, you know, at least five to six days a week. Uh, you know, why do you think people get behind these fat diets? Because they just, they just want results right away and they don't want to put in the work. Right. That's a, that's what yeah. it is. Right. Let me smash that easy button. Like if you have a, like if I had a pill that could take 10 pounds off someone, like I'd be, I'd be sitting on like crazy money, you know, like people just want the fastest results as like, and they don't want to do the work. Right. Cause the, and this like building a business and building your body the same thing. It just takes consistent daily effort, you know, on these small little tasks, drinking enough water, getting enough sleep, eating enough greens, going to the gym, you know, like putting in the work, doing your content, putting up videos, high quality stuff, following up leads, you know, all these things that are not sexy and don't sell things. So when someone's like, yo, I got the secret, it's called keto. All you have to do is eat butter in your coffee and then you're going to lose a bunch of weight. People are like, what? Sign me up. Right? <laughs> yeah. So it's, but like the, the problem with these diets is that like, it's one thing to experiment with them and try them out and kind of see how you feel. I think that's like, that's healthy. But if you're like, Oh my gosh, I heard about the, I heard about the new diet. I'm, I'm all in and you go do keto. Well, it's cool. But like the second you have a beer or a bagel or something like that, that weight's coming right back to all the spots you don't want it. So it's not sustainable. People always tell me, Oh, I'm trying keto. I lost 10 pounds. I lost 15 pounds. I'm like, hit great. Hit me up in three months though. I've never met the person who's like, I've been doing keto for two years. I don't know who that is. I never heard of it. Yeah. It's always like these day one evangelists trying to tell me, like, sell me on this, some new supplement or some new, some new dietary protocol. But the people who have been doing this for like three, four, five years, I go, Hey, like, how's your, like, how's your diet? They're like, it's not a diet. It's just how I eat now because it's just a framework. And you can like, so I said proteins and fats in the morning. A great option for that is, is like protein shake, some almond butter, like you mentioned, almond, like a little bit of almond milk, a little bit of ice, throw a little creatine, some, some cinnamon in there off the door. Right. Or switch it out for some eggs, some avocado, or switch it out for some like a chicken thigh and some like handful of almonds. You can just kind of plug and play once you understand how th like how the framework is, right? It's like when you're doing like a like a, a YouTube video or putting out like a like a piece of content. Once you understand the 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 framework of like hey, we're going to have a hook at the top, we're going to tell a story of this bit and then we're going to have a call to action at the bottom. Then it's plug and play. It doesn't take you have to you don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time you do it. You know what I mean? I think it's education too. Like uh, I'm not from the States. Uh, so the way that I grew up eating, uh, you know, I come from an Italian and Spanish family. So the way I grew up eating, it's all like made from scratch, like vegetables. We will go to the market, you know, before we move to the States, like my parent, my, you know, my mom will go to the market and buy fresh vegetables, go to the meat market, get the meat. Like that's how it is over there. Um, so everything in my house was always made from scratch. And the thing that I learned when I moved here to the States or when I used to come here on vacation before we moved to the States, it's like you go to the grocery store, man, and it's just obnoxious. And trust me, I've been here for almost 30 years, so I eat all of it. So I'm not hating, you know, because I, I do have my weaknesses. But, you know, most people aren't educated on what's good food and bad food. Like, you know, the, the best rule that somebody gave me was stay away from the house. Just go around in a circle, like in the outside of the circle. 100%, but like, but you don't think that like, if I, if I put out a big tray, a table of like foods, right. And I got like broccoli and I got stuff and I got all these other like things on there. You don't think people could point to the pizza and be like, that's bad for me. And the point to like the apple and be like, that's good for me. I think people are smarter than we no, can. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, of course that. No, no, I didn't mean it like that. Like they know that obviously we know that obviously most people know that obviously, but it's like, it gets tricky when you get, go down the aisles and then you have like the marketing side of things, which is what I do for a living. Low it's fat, like fat free, free or, you yeah, know, 100%. Lose weight. you know what I'm saying? Like, all the labels like super organic and it's not organic at all uh <laughs> you know like when did we decide that that i think it was the 80s like fat is bad for you like i learned I, when i learned that fat was good for you i was like oh my god this whole time i thought it was horrible for you like and then it turns out it's actually good for you if you if you're eating real fat you know like on a piece of steak or whatever i think it was actually <laughs> in 1968 they were doing these tests and so like it, these harvard scientists were doing tests on like what's causing like like obesity and what's causing like, like heart disease and stuff like that. And people from like, who are like, who are more pro sugar, more pro carbs actually paid these scientists to, to find a little different in like find a little different results. So they came back and were like, Oh, you know what it's causing it? Saturated fats. That's what's killing us. And it launched this whole like governmental, like, I don't want to say conspiracy, but like this, like, like the uh, like food and drug administration was like, okay, it's fat. So like, let's eliminate fat. So that's when margarine came from. That's where the whole, like, like the, the food pyramid came from. And so we are undoing like, like 50 years later, these 
like these experiments that have that were like paid for essentially by lobbyists who had an agenda we're having to like unlearn all this stuff so you're like you're 100 right i was being a little facetious but like like there's a lot of misinformation out there and then you go to like you go to a grocery store and you see on a bag of potatoes it says gluten-free and you're like yeah. oh great gluten-free potatoes well gluten's a wheat protein there's no gluten in potatoes you don't gotta worry about that <laughs> So it's just, it's like confusing. And then there's like, there's like, oh, should I do this diet? Should I be vegetarian? Like the Game Changer documentary on Netflix says I should be vegetarian or vegan. Well, yeah, but did you know that the Game Changer documentary guy owns stakes in all these vegan protein companies? It has a vested interest in you not eating meat, you know, like. I was, yeah, like, that's so believe? true. I didn't know that, but it's, I watched that documentary and there was, which one was the one that was about trying to make you to go vegan it's on netflix it's like eggs give you cancer and everything gives you cancer steaks give you cancer i'm like well well i guess i'm gonna be dead you know because i'm not gonna stop eating like steaks and eggs you know i mean if you're vegetarian respect i respect that i don't i don't condone or believe from mistreating animals or factory farming but you know it's like when you watch the documentary it's always one-sided they want they want to push the their point across to you and, and get their message out. So always do your research. So let's get into it, man. So you know somebody like me who works from home, entrepreneur, business owner, you know they just want to get in shape. Uh, they reach out to you. What is that process like? So I, I come to you and I'm like, dude, I'm a mess. I'm 300 pounds of pure fat, and you know <laughs> I'm eating like crap. What do we do here? How does that process work? Like how do you so, take me through the process so people that are watching or listening know what, what it's like? So generally, like like but the first 12 weeks are scripted. It's super, it's super like straightforward. Everything's like laid out for you. And then after that, it gets a little bit more um like customized. And I used to do all these custom programs for people, but when I when I realized that, like, hey, it wasn't necessarily about like people not looking for like customer bespoke programming, they're looking for results. So once I have like a program that exact like that works exactly, I want to just script your moves and make it so so simple because like you said, Christian, you don't have a ton of time. You don't, I'm not going to send you away and be like, hey, go find some foods with 40 grams of protein that also have manganese in them so that you get the right minerals. No, I just <laughs> yeah. go, hey, bro, yeah, I need you to eat this with with, with uh, I need you to eat some so this with almonds in the morning. Great, like out the door. I need you to do this same thing every day for 28 days. So the first 28 days is very 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 straight like straightforward and structured. It's eat eat like this, drink like this. And do 20 minutes of movement per day. Like it's, it's, and it's super laid out. And that's basically what I talk about in the book is like, I give it all up there. And then after that, it's an eight week period of now let's dial it in for you. Okay. So now, now that you know the framework, let's take your favorite foods. What else do you like? Let's put that in there. Okay. Now let's switch this for breakfast. Now let's try this out a little bit. Okay. How is your energy there? All right. Let's back that off. And so now it's a little bit more like customizing and figuring out what, like, where you're at and what you enjoy eating because I don't want to just say, hey, here's a meal plan. Eat like this for the rest of your life. Again, not sustainable. Yeah. But I think that if you, the 28 days of something very rigid and, and it's going to help you build the framework and understand that this is not just about fat loss, which you're going to do. You're going to see a lot of fat loss, but it's about the focus you get. It's about the energy you get. It's about waking up feeling really good without having to have three cups of coffee first. And then after that, it, like, it just kind of becomes like your new, new normal. Most people walk around feeling like they have a head cold. And they don't even know it because they've just felt like that for for 20 years. Oh, they just eat like shit and they take stimulants and they sleep poorly and they wake up feeling bad again. They don't, and that's just normal. I joke so around all, gotta, I joke around all the time now that uh once you hit 40, ice cream gives you hangovers. Like I literally, <laughs> like I'll have a you know, I'll have ice cream <laughs> at night. Uh not all the time, but every once in a while. And of course I pick out and eat like half of it. Uh and then the next day I wake up and I literally have like a, I don't I don't know if it's a sugar hangover or it's just being old, but it's like, I feel like if just, I pounded like seven beers the night before, it's crazy. So I'm assuming it's like all that sugar, right? 100%, yeah, that sugar hits you pretty hard. And then like you can, like you said, get a sugar hangover. It's crazy. It's Thankfully insane. it doesn't last three days like the, uh, the no, actual beer no, hangover. No, so. no, 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 not as much. You get going and, it, and your energy comes back. So mm -hmm. you, you developed a diet for every specific person, but what about working out? Because I wanna get your opinion as well. I should ask this earlier of places like, you know, like orange, uh, theory and, you know, those, those that they, you know, you do different workouts every day. I'm sure there's other chains I can't think of right now, but orange theory is the one I go to that one right now for the cardio, um, and, and regular gyms. So what do you think of those type of chains? What the difference between those chains and like the regular gym, what, what do you prefer, uh, when it comes to those two? 
So it really depends on like what your goals are. If your goals are to have like a, like a visibly muscular physique, I don't think Orange Theory Fitness is going to get you there. Like you said, Orange Theory Fitness is great for cardio, but cardio to me is cheap. You know, it's like, cause like you, like, have you experienced this before where you like go and you're like doing really good and you can run five miles. And then all of a sudden you take like a week off, you get a little sick. And then like you go back and you're like, how come I can't run anymore? How can I be so hard? I'm literally going through it right now because when this whole thing started and everything opened back up, I didn't want to go back to my regular gym because it's filthy, but I love it because I love that gym, but you know, I don't want to get sick. And my wife, uh, goes to orange theory and they're spotless. Like every, after every class, they like just clean everything out. Like you have, you wipe, people wipe everything out all the time. So I felt like safe, it's clean and knock on wood, it's been safe up, you know, up until now. And that's why I started doing it. But one thing that I noticed is it's the same thing. I got sick, uh, not Rona and I took two weeks off. And then I never did cardio before that besides 10 minutes here and there. And you're right, man. I couldn't, it's like, I can't get back into the that way works. I was running before. Yeah. The cool thing about resistance training now, like weight training is that they actually just did a study on like steroid users a while back, but it was like, um, testing the, like the nucleus of your muscle cells and actually seeing that people who were athletic, played football, did steroids, built muscle up early in their life. They were able to access that muscle because muscle doesn't like it, sh it shrinks, but it doesn't go away. So like, it's like, it's not like if you don't use it, you lose it. It's like, you don't use it, you lose it until you start using it again. So muscle comes back, muscle has memory. And then also muscle shapes your body. It provides you with increased metabolism. It helps you with like that bone density. It has a lot of other benefits, but it's expensive. It takes a lot more time. And then the only way to do that really is by consistently getting a little bit stronger as you go. And you can't do that during an orange theory because they're always doing like constantly varied different types of movements. Yeah. So you're never, you're never like just like seeing how many reps you can get on a TRX row or you can't even, you know, I don't think they have weights above fifties. No, they so, don't. so like, it's a good, it's a good way to get cardio. It's a good way to like have some camaraderie and like, and, and like burn a bunch of calories. But as far as changing your body for life, I think resistance training kind of just like your bare bones, like gym kind of pig iron is always going to be the best bet. Even I was joking around. It's like, I miss throwing shit around. <laughs> like I was never, it's I mean, I, it's not like I can lift like 375 or 400 pounds on my chest, but it feels good, man. As a guy, when you can lift, you know, like 245 or 235, it feels strong, you know? It's cathartic too, isn't it? To like get yeah, in there and like totally. push some weight around. It feels, it, it does like, there's a mental component too. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's all I was going to ask you. So when you, once you get through the nutrition side of things and like, okay, you need to work out, do you develop like a plan for lifting weights or cardio, depending on the, what the person wants to do? How do you, how do you approach that side of things? So the first 28 days is, is, is basically you're doing like a, a 20 minute workout every day, striving to get just a little bit better every single time. So whether that's one more rep, another, like, like a little bit more, like a little faster on your way home on your run or whatever, whatever that looks like, you just get a little bit better. And that second set of like on that eight weeks, now we're going to be dialing in your workout a little bit more specific to you, like getting a little bit more of the resistance training, either using a suspension trainer or a full gym, generally what I recommend. And then, um, after that, then I go in a little bit more of like a customized program for people based off of their goals, their injuries, their history, that sort of thing. And so generally speaking, that's going to be between two and four days per week of resistance training, another two, two ish days of, of cardio. And then always focusing on the, like the, the big muscles. So like for chest, I'm always going to be doing an incline dumbbell press. It's the number one like chest builder. And for guys, we need that upper chest because we already have the lower chest. We just, we need to lift everything up and tone it. Okay. For back dumbbell row is kind of my favorite, it, especially when we're spending a lot of time in computer posture, looking at our phones. So it pulls us back, gets us into a really nice posture. And like you can row pretty much every day with ever, without ever getting too sore. And for legs, one of my favorite exercises is always going to be the Bulgarian split squat because it's training a couple different um, like I've, I've heard the name, but I'm trying to picture it in my head. Which one is that? The Bulgarian? Some people call it a rear foot elevated split squat, but basically you'll put your foot back on a bench, and drop your back knee down. So you're kind yes. of like in okay. a lunge, but with your foot back. Right. So it's awesome because you get this amazing stretch through your quad and your hip flexor. You get, you train your ankle stability. So if you're like a runner or a, like a hiker, or you like getting out and like being more athletic, it's going to keep your ankles super safe. It trains this specific muscle in your quad called your vastus medialis oblique, your VMO. It's like the teardrop muscle near your knee, mm -hmm. which is great for knee stability and low back stability. So you get all these amazing, amazing things out of this one exercise. So I'm always going to try to choose like the, where we can gain the most strength. So like 
you're never going to get like, you're never going to be able to do 50 pound side raises. Right. Yeah. But we can probably go from 40 pound chest press to like to 90 pound chest press. Like you can get a huge increase there. So finding exercises that give you the, like a lot of upward, like, um, like upward mobility in terms of strength gain and also train a couple of different characteristics. It's like stability, uh, mobility, uh, flexibility, and strength. It's amazing. That's cool. And then, uh, there's one more question that I have for you because we're running out of time, but every time that I look this one up and every time to everybody who's into fitness that I talk to, I always get a different answer. So I'm, I'm kind of curious to what you're going to say. So if you're trying to build muscle, should you do cardio before you lift weights or after you lift weights and why? That's a great question. I always okay. get a different answer. So I'm curious to see what you're going to say. So you need to do cardio after you lift weights because like in, in the pursuit of gaining muscle, you need to spend your majority of your energy on actually lifting the weights. So like if your primary goal is to drop fat, then do your cardio ahead of time because what's going to happen is you're going to elevate your heart rate and you're never really going to come back down. So your workout's going to go like this. You're going to come up here and you're going to do your weights. And you're going to be like this. But if you do your weights first, you're going to be down here. You're going to be like, and then you can ramp it up for the cardio afterwards. So what's nice about that also is if you do your cardio after the fact, you're going to burn a higher percentage of fat because you've already burned up your muscle glycogen. So like you've already lifted the weights, you've already burned through like, like the, the energy in your muscles. So now your, your cardio is going to forcibly take from fat stores rather than taking from the, from the muscle glycogen ahead of time. And then you get to your weights and you're like, man, I'm tired and I don't know why. Like, why is my chest tired? I just ran. <laughs> but it'll just, it'll just steal that energy and then it won't allow you to have your maximum ability to like produce force during your weightlifting section. Does that make sense? It does make sense. That's like the most specific answer I've ever gotten in that question. So I truly, truly appreciate it. Listen, man, we're out of time. I really appreciate you coming on. Uh, this was a fun conversation, a little bit different. Usually the people that I have on, you know, but I, I enjoy talking about fitness now that I actually have to do it and I do it. I actually enjoy it when I'm done. Uh, but uh, for those uh, of um, out there that are looking for the help to get into shape, and I know a lot of you probably need it because you want to sit in front of that computer like I do all day long. You need to stretch that back, stretch that neck. Um, you know, where can they find your name? Uh, obviously I'm going to put all the links in the description, but just so people know. Best place is uh, I hang out all the time in my Facebook group called the million dollar body. It's uh, it's an awesome community just filled with like really super, super positive people. We're always talking about kind of like I would, I would consider like higher level fitness stuff. I always try to keep everything really scientifically backed. And then just the community is amazing there. So you can get there by n8 training systems.com slash group. We'll get you there. You can also check me out on Amazon if you're not really like if you're not really ready for a fitness program, but we'll kind of want to see what like what I'm talking about and if this is the right fit for you. Grab the book. It's uh, 99 cents on Kindle or 15 bucks for the, the hard copy. But uh, yeah, just just uh, and then and then you can hit me an email. Honestly, just shoot me an email. Let me know what you need. Go get it. All right, man. I'll put up the links in the description. Everybody, go check it out. If you need help, do it. Get in shape your energy will go through the roof and you will get more done. I promise you. I fought it for the longest time and I wish I would have started working out when I was a kid. So Nate, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate you coming on. Dude, this is so much fun. Thanks for having me on Christian. No problem, man. We'll do it again soon.